This is the third and final part of my interview with the INEOS Tech Chief. You can listen to it all in one go or jump around using the chapter links. What changes have been made to the BMW engine to make it off-road ready? Um, I know, for example, that there's additional um, cooling. Um, I imagine that the uh, torque curve would, would have been um, changed, stuff like that, perhaps um, yeah. less of a focus on, on NVH, more on reliability, uh, different angles, I don't know, stuff like that. Yeah, so um, you're right, we, we have an additional cooling. Um, that additional cooling is mainly, um, or we mainly use it or, or need it for lower lower speeds and high towing. Yeah? So the, the I would say the most critical um, situation for, for a vehicle in, in, in that uh, case is uh, loaded up to 3.5 tons, have a 3.5 ton trailer, drive uh, a mountain pass 15 miles um, over uh, 4,000 meters yeah, uh, with a high temperature. Yeah, so that, that's the worst case scenario. And uh, in that case, we needed the additional cooler. Yeah, we, we decided to have that cooler in, in each and every vehicle, yeah? um, even if it's I would say necessary, probably in two to five percent of uh, of the usage, uh, what we're having. Um, we have reduced torque and speed because of uh, um, the the uh, I would say the long longevity That's to improve the, longevity. Oh, sorry, what's the other one? Speed. Um, yes, we we have we we have reduced torque. Yeah, and we have re, uh, we have reduced the speed. Yeah, for for the vehicle. Yeah, so okay. uh, we are we are limiting the speed of the vehicle for 160. So the engine uh, would would give us, I would say, probably 25 to 30 kilometers more. Mm -hmm. uh, but that that was reduced uh, and torque was reduced because BMW is not uh, operating a, a 3.5 and and not a seven ton mm -hmm. uh, vehicle. So therefore, yes, um, we have uh, the torque peak moved to a lower engine rev. Mm -hmm. We have uh, adjusted the oil level um, because we have different driving situations than uh, the BM BMW have uh, developed. Mm -hmm. um, so we're using, uh, I think it's half a liter more oil um, to, uh, to fulfill um, to fulfill our requirements of climbing, yeah, with the um, well, all the angles, and we have uh, adjusted the the pedal mapping to uh, give us a little more a, a sensitive uh, throttle response. With the uh, cross axle differential locks, when you hit the disengage, I believe it requires a wheel speed difference to turn the light off. Yet the um, it is disengaged as soon as you hit the Hit the hit the button. Is that correct? Um, as 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 soon. I mean, at the end, we have a mechanical. We have a mechanical lock. Yeah. Um. We don't have a sensor at the lock exactly. That's again coming to our strategy. Have a a, a robust system with as less as as possible electronics in. So therefore, we are using the wheel speed sensors. Um, so as soon as you engage the locks, yeah, you sure because it's a, a geometrical engagement. You need to move a little, but it's in um, um, right away. Um, if you disengage, it's the same. You need to um, disengage geometrically, but the system needs to um, see again a difference in the wheel speed sensors yeah, to really um, see if it's disengaged or not okay that that makes that makes sense and that that, that was that was my understanding um yep. however that can lead to the driver 
not being sure if the lock is in or out because then it flashes and unless they turn enough to generate a wheel speed difference um, that will continue flashing for ever basically which is in my view a usability uh, um, problem mm -hmm. um I mean, we, we discussed it uh, inside of Ineos a lot, as, as you can imagine. We got feedback from customers. We got feedback from press with our press drives. Um, I mean, this this is a kind of... We still feel like the, the liability, a uh, reliability, sorry, the reliability of, uh, of the diff locks or the system is developed the right way. But I agree, it's it's different to some some other vehicles, and you need to get used to it a little. Yeah, you need to know what is happening in the vehicle, how you are operating, or how you need to work with the vehicle, that it's not uh, bringing you in in an uncomfortable uh, situation. Yeah, I agree to that. Yeah, but but at the other side, I think you're getting used to it. Yeah, you can. You can work with it. You need to know um, what uh, or how, how the vehicle is reacting, what is happening, but then you can uh, work with it. Okay. Now, do you have any driving technique advice for Ineos Grenadier owners that they may not necessarily um, already know from previous experience? So, for oh, example, in Australia, what one thing I'm always yeah. telling people to do is to lock the centre diff in low range because most Australian four-wheel drives automatically well, don't, don't require that. So that that's something which catches people out. Um, for, as as for, for many of us, do anything you'd like to say? Hey, this is a good way to drive, bad way to drive. Are you aware the vehicle can do this? That sort of thing. Oh, I'm, I'm not sure if I have too much advice here. I mean, uh, you, you, you're right. Um, um, starting with a central uh, diff lock uh, in in certain terrains is uh, is uh, is good. Yeah, for sure. I mean, what 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 I experience in 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 all of our testing is always you need to to read um, your your past. You need to know what what is coming to you, and you need to react. Um, not uh, when you are in a situation, but you need to react before you going into that situation. Yeah? So you need to be prepared. You need to know, like like we just discussed, do I need the uh, a rear diff lock? Do I need uh, the the front diff lock? Um, engage it. Yeah? Um, it's never a fault to engage it. Maybe one time too early. Yeah? In, instead of being then in a difficult situation uh, with the with the vehicle and then. Uh, um, than reacting later. I mean, that's that's one of the main things I also learned during the development phase. It's uh, reading reading your past yeah. and uh, react uh, early enough. So, so, so that's kind of general yeah. four-wheel drive advice um, um, after any of specific uh, advice. But um, if it, there's nothing on that, then that's fine. I want to. We've got a couple of minutes left. I want to uh, cover off the uh, any new accessories which may be um, planned or modifications of existing accessories there's quite a range already i mean um just let me think i think we don't have the six foot roof rack yet in the market uh, so we will have a six foot roof rack um, that is uh, also carrying a heavy heavy load that will be that will be uh, uh, coming in the next weeks and, and months um, but beside that we have, uh, I think we have 90, 90%, 95% of our accessories in the market right now. Um, and uh, at least there is not a plan to to have another kind of huge additional accessories what, what is going uh, from or what, what is coming from Ineos. We always said from the beginning, um, we want to be open that uh, people can, can play with a Grenadier, they can work with a Grenadier, they can do their own stuff. Uh, to the Grenadier, um, and for us, it does not make sense to to go into every every single niche and uh, deliver every every single uh, accessory to the vehicle. Because at the end, um, again, you cannot do everything uh, as an OEM. What uh, some some 
accessory companies can do outside of an OEM. Yeah, so we will leave it. We leave. We will leave that to them. Yeah. Okay. Now the dual batteries, they are wired in parallel, not series. Typically, for dual batteries, you would have one for your starter motor and the vehicle's electronics, and the other one purely dedicated to accessories. Ineos has chosen to to, to n not to do that. Uh, why is that? Um, sorry. So, are you can familiar? You, so in Australia, we, we've got a dual battery system in the trial master and an option in other vehicles. Um, are you familiar with that with that option? I don't know if it's specific to Australia. No, it's it's not specific uh, to Australia. Yeah. So this is uh, this is a system that we are providing uh, worldwide. Okay. Yeah. So typically that would be set up so that the vehicles. Um, one battery is for the vehicle itself or the normal electronics and the second battery is purely auxiliary and is never touched unless um, it's on the auxiliary circuit powering a fridge or or whatever else the case may be but with the grenadier the two are actually wired um, in, in parallel so that they're used at exactly the same time which is unusual so i wanted to understand the thinking behind that decision no, I, I cannot give you more details there. Sorry. All right, cool. All right, so um, we'll move on to EVs then. So with the Fusilier, um, clearly you've got a motor in the front, a motor at the rear. That requires what I would term a software differential lock in the centre because you don't have a drivetrain in the centre. Uh, what are some of the engineering challenges involved in an EV's four-wheel drive drivetrain versus a mechanical drivetrain? Hmm. Um, I, I need to to uh, um, skip that question. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, so there there is. A, I would say we are still in the in the concept phase there, how we want to develop it. Um, so, so therefore, I, I cannot uh, tell you now for for the <laughs> insights of it. No, no, sorry. Um, that's fine. You're allowed. You're allowed to skip questions. Is there any information you would like to get out to people who use the Grenadier uh, um, in anything about recovered driving, but anything else that they should know, which you're seeing that people don't really know? So it's your chance to sort of send a message. No, <laughs> that's. That's a difficult one. Um, probably that that would help if I would be a little closer to to the Australian market. Uh, oh honestly. no, this is worldwide. This is worldwide. People will watch this oh, okay. worldwide. So you yeah. know, um, everywhere on planet Earth. Beyond that, I can't guarantee, but certainly planet Earth. Yeah. Okay. Good. I mean, at the end, there 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 is a lot uh, that uh, the the Grenadier is is giving to customers. I'm not sure if if everybody is really aware what a grenadier um, can do. I mean, what what I feel like in at least in in some of our really heavy off road markets like the Australia, like like Africa, like the United States, some some areas in in Europe, um, Middle East, um, people know how to operate a grenadier. Um, but I also had a lot of contact with uh, customers that are not really uh, knowing all of the functions. So what, what I would say is really get a, a, a very good introduction from your dealer. Um, listen, listen to him. Um, in that case, also really read your manual that you really know what, uh, what you can do with a vehicle um, because it is different. Like you mentioned, um, some people are buying a Grenadier. They, they never have used a, a diff lock. Uh, before um, they never uh, did waiting before, so I mean, at the end, I think it it definitely makes sense to to get a, a real good introduction of your vehicle and then uh, uh, operate accordingly. I mean, at the end, we try to develop the Grenadier that it's as good as possible self-explaining. Uh, as we don't have, we we have a lot of buttons for sure. Uh, but all of those buttons, uh, we are trying to simplify the oper op uh, operating our vehicle. Um, but uh, we don't have uh, crazy systems in what uh, what needs a, a very deep explanation. 
Um, you need to understand how to operate the locks. You need to understand how to operate uh, off-road mode and waiting mode. Uh, but at the end, I mean, that's it. Everything else is on you as a driver. Uh, you, you have the control, you decide. If you go with a high gear or a low gear, you decide uh, which uh, lockers you're using. And uh, that will be an experience for you. And I think every every customer should try to um, yeah, learn, learn the Grenadier, how to operate the Grenadier. So that was part three of three of this technical engineer interview. If you're interested in more content like this, then check out my series where I talk to the engineers behind the Land Cruiser 300 series. Thanks for watching.